Hello, Alan Roy here. Uh, some arguments are so bad, you wish you didn't have to deal with them. And there's an argument, it comes from some Eastern Orthodox, not all of them are, are, are stupid enough to use this argument. Sadly, it has seeped into, into Anglicanism as well, although they use it less. And... Um, they, they, they kind of have their own v version of it because they can't use the same argument. But basically, this is the argument. That England was Orthodox until 1066 when William the Conqueror and his Papist army invaded the country and destroyed the Orthodox Church there and put the Romanist, Papist, uh, false, filioquist, un, uh, unleavened bread church in England, and it was it's been Catholic ever since, or Catholic until until Henry VIII. That's the argument. I hear this all the time, and um, what I do when I come across these people is I ask them one question. I ask only one question to these people. Only one. And I get the same answer every time. My one question to these people is have you read Venerable Bede's Ecclesiastical History of the English People? That's my one question I ask the, the Eastern Orthodox people who uh, promote this. Again, they don't all do that, but unfortunately some do, and it's not a small number. I, I asked him, have they read Bede and his, his church history? And I get the same answer every single time. No, I haven't read Bede. That's what they say. Now, Bede is a saint in both Catholic and Eastern Orthodoxy, so you, you think they would take the time to read this. But yeah, that's my only question. Have they read Venerable Bede? That's my one question I asked them. I, I, I mean, I could ask them more. I could ask them if they read uh, this book, The Age of Bede, which has a collection of... Uh, Beads the Life of Cuthbert, and a whole bunch of other documents, including Adia Stephanus, also known as Stephen of R Riffon, The Life of w w Wilfred. I could ask if they've read that. I could ask if they've r r read Asher's Life of Alfred the Great, uh, a pre-schism Catholic and Orthodox saint, and this biography was written pre-schism. I could ask them that. I could ask them if they've read Arid of Rivo's biography of... Um, of St. Edward the Confessor. I could ask if they've read the Anglo-Saxon um, Chronicle. I could ask if they've read Henry of Huntington's The History of the English People, 1000 to 1154. I could ask if they've read The Deeds of the Bishops of England by William of Malmesbury. I could ask if they've read all of that, but I don't. I've read all of that, by the way. I only ask if they've read the ecclesiastical history of the English people by Venerable Bede. This book is written by a saint. It's cheap. It's easily available. It's published by Penguin. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of other editions out there. You can buy this for probably 20 bucks Canadian. I don't know how much that is American or in English pounds or in the rubles or whatever. So, that's what I ask. And th this gives a glimpse of England. Of course, he's writing in the 8th century. Because, I mean, of course, th there will be things that Catholics and Orthodox uh, agree on. Uh, because we both agree on uh, um, a lot of things. But where do we disagree? Let's take two things where we disagree. Papal authority and the filioque, right? Both firmly condemned by Eastern Orthodoxy, papal authority, and the filioque. So I encourage everyone who promotes this uh, 1066, William the Conqueror Destroys Orthodoxy in England, to read this book and keep those two things in mind, papal authority, filioque. And read this book and ask yourself, does he side with the Catholics or Eastern Orthodox on this one? Really? So l let me give you an example. If he was Orthodox, if Bede 
was ortho and England was orthodox, what they would never do, never ever do, was produce a creed that had the filioque in it, right? They would never do that. They would never produce a creed with a filioque. Do they do that? Well, to find out, you're going to have to read this book. And you should read this if um, just to note your history, especially if you live in Canada or the States or a colony of England, because he is the English church, the church that comes into modernity of our probably not our biological ancestors, but our political ancestors, um, um, the spiritual heritage of England is outlined here. So if you're in the States, Canada, Australia, or England, obviously, read this book. Now, this is one of the reasons I emphasize primary sources. Why has no one who agrees with this theory actually read this book? Oh, because they read something online by some guy named Moss. Well, you, you know, this is why you need to read primary sources. Because, again, if they have a synod that produces a creed with the filioque in it, they're not orthodox. Or if they believe in papal authority. Or if they send that creed to the Pope for approval. Well, well why would they do that, right? So, anyway, whenever someone uh, proposes this really bad theory about um about England being orthodox till 1066 ask them if they read this book and you know what the answer is going to be because if they have read this book they won't be promoting that theory and if you don't believe me read this book all right that's all i got for today signing off god bless all of you